So good news, forest fires have settled down. We got a lot of rain last week and everything seems to be in control. The smoke has died down. And as you guys can see, we are doing a lot better than we were last week. And it was just kind of a little blip on the farm, but you know, this is always something that is important that there always will be challenges. And with that, we have another challenge on our farm and that's coming up next. My farm hasn't had water all day and this has been something that I've been dealing with actually for the entire season for, for 2017. Our mushroom farm has had periods of time where the water has been shut off because they're redoing all the water pipes on Garnet Valley where our farm is and they've had to shut the water off on occasions or they've had some cracks in some pipes because they're redoing the whole road and laying down four inch pipe underneath the road and replacing the old lines because they're starting to fall apart and today they gave us two days notice and they said they're going to shut off the water all day while they're switching our farm and a lot of different homes onto the new water line and there's a lot of construction going on right now and mushrooms need water you know this is not something that we can just we can just hope that our farm's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna die if we don't get water. So we had to come up with a solution, and to be honest, I didn't actually think this was gonna work. My, my business partner, Thor, he mentioned, why don't we use our sump pump that I've used in the past for mixing our hydrated lime for our grain, and why don't we hook that up to these IBC totes, hook up a sump pump, which is gonna pump water in this garden hose, and we actually have connected it to the irrigation lines for our greenhouse. So right now we have water going right into a tap right there. And that is feeding water into the irrigation lines which are underground. And they're feeding all of our greenhouses right now. And I can't believe it. This has actually been working all day. And this is something that I started thinking, what a great solution for someone. Maybe if you're off grid, you don't have access to water, you don't have access to power even, you know, you can fill up these IBC totes with rainwater, or you could get a water truck here and fill these up on, on water shortage months. And if you had no access to power, you could even set up like a solar power generator to plug in your sump pump or or possibly even a generator that's that's powered by gasoline. You know, these are really interesting solutions that if you have a farm that's off grid, you're trying to feed your family or you're trying to do a farm that you don't you're not relied on on power, this works. And and you know, this is the first time we've done it and we just have a really cheap but $120 sub pump that I picked up at the local hardware store. And this is pumping in enough water into our water lines for our greenhouses to feed from. What's really important is that the misting fans, I'll bring you, I'll bring you to the greenhouses in a minute, but the misting fans, they use uh, only six gallons of water per hour. We have five of those. They're hooked up to humidistat and they don't even go on all the time. You know, we're just into September right now and the sun, the sun is, is, is not as hot, so the misting fans don't need to run as often to stay humid, so they're not even using their full capacity of water. We've been running this all day, and this is probably about a thousand liters of water in this tank here, and we've only used about a half of this tank. You guys can see the water line just right there. And we even have this IBC on standby, filled with water just in case. I wasn't sure if, you know, there might be complications where this project runs into tomorrow or, or we'd run out of water. So I wasn't sure exactly how this was gonna work out, but th this has worked and really, 
really stoked that this is such an awesome solution for our farm but also an awesome solution for someone that possibly could use this that doesn't have electrical or irrigation lines hooked up. You can feed this right into the greenhouses. So I'll just bring you to greenhouse three right now and show you exactly how this is working. So this this misting fan here, this this the uh, the Aquafog uh, SS seven hundred. This is actually the, the cheaper model. It doesn't produce as much mist and doesn't use as much water. So this uses uh, about 300 cc's of water. But I more just want to give you an idea. We've been having four greenhouses running all day today and we just cleaned the, our fifth greenhouse. We didn't actually run the water on it. And it doesn't even need that much water pressure and it's giving enough water, the sub pump's giving enough water in the system that the fans are able to, you know, take water on demand as needed and we're holding enough water pressure as you can see right there. So I'll just open this tap just to show you exactly how much water we got. So you're not even that much, but it's enough. And everything's hooked up with a humidistat. So we have a humidistat back here. And the humidistat just runs with some papers. Those papers, they absorb water and as they get heavy, they weigh down and turn off a switch. And then as the, as the humidity evaporates, the papers get lighter and they disconnect from the switch and turn the fan on. So that's, that's how that operates. And that way we're only using as much water as we need and we're not wasting water. And in this situation, this is important. So right now we're just transitioning to our cold weather species and we have blue oysters just starting. We have some pearl oysters as well, but if you guys can get, get an idea, that's, that's kind of where the farm is at right now. We're just finishing up growing all our warm weather species. We just did our final harvest with pink oysters and we're just moving into fall species. We should have king oysters soon. We've been running pearl oysters a couple weeks. Blue oysters just started this week and tree oysters, we just start expanding into uh, production blocks as well. So right now our farm is mid-September. We're looking to run for another two months to mid-November hopefully and then we'll shut down for the year. So we still have lots of growing and lots of awesome mushrooms to come and a lot of species that that I always that I always grow at the end of the year that I haven't really been growing for about three or four months now. So it's always an exciting time for my business to start growing different varieties and offer different stuff to chefs. All right guys, well, I hope you found that helpful. I'll leave a link below if you're interested in our WTF t-shirt. I've decided with, uh, with our t-shirts that we're just gonna continuously run a campaign and I always leave the link below. I just don't always advertise it, but been really happy with these t-shirts. I have uh, quite quite a selection that I've been wearing on the farm now. It seems to be the only thing I, I wear these days, but I think you'd be really happy if you guys are willing to pick that up to support me. Uh, also, details for our 2018 mentorship, they're up on our website. We started filling spots already. April seems to be almost booked up, and we have a few bookings that uh, are probably gonna be booked up in June. But other than that, we have lots of availability in that program has been really successful for us this year. And if you have any questions, please leave your comments below. All right, I'll talk to you soon.